Hello and welcome back to all of my friends, family, subscribers. Philo in the Philippines, North Calocan City, where the city meets the province, baby. Today is a very special day for me. Today is one year living in the Philippines. Uh, yeah, that's right. I arrived here on the 7th of January, 2018. And uh, Melanie and I stayed at the Manila Hotel in Ermita. Beautiful. Manila Hotel, two thumbs up. If you haven't seen that video, look down in our video description list and you will see my very first vlogging video from living in the Philippines, not just coming here as a visitor, as I did for three years before I moved here. Uh, <clears throat> so what I wanted to do, guys, is... Uh, I, I, now, let me be the first to say I'm not a big fan, okay, of talking head videos. Um, uh, I don't. I, I'm undiagnosed ADD, and I have to move around a lot. And I, I don't have a lot of patience to even watch a talking head video, uh, as a lot of vloggers do. Uh, but uh, the only way that I can explain to you and tell you about me is to do the video in this format. So um, I don't want to bore anybody. Uh, some of you are going to be interested in this. Some of you uh, are not. And we'll do videos that you are that you are interested in. I promise. Uh, so uh, what I thought I would do. Uh, as a format for this, is there's three questions that always seem to come up. Okay, as a, since I became a Philippine vlogger, and since I moved to the Philippines, there's three questions that seem to always come up. So I'm going to focus on on those three questions, and those questions are: uh, question number one is why the Philippines. Question number two is how did you retire so young, and how did you know how did you retire so young? Uh, I came here at the age of 52. And question number three is, uh, how did you meet Melanie? How did you and Melanie meet? So I'm going to focus on those three questions. And if I haven't answered uh, something or there's is something even more that you want to know, hit me up on Facebook, go to our cover photo, click that Facebook link, send me a message, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, one of the things that I'm most interested in doing is making that transition easier for you. If you're going to come here, if you're thinking about moving to the Philippines, you're thinking about marrying a Filipina, or even meeting a Filipina girlfriend for the first time, uh, I want to try and help you make that transition a little bit easier. So uh, I do a very honest, honest reporting of what it's like to live here in the Philippines, okay? Uh, that doesn't go over well with a lot of people. <laughs> uh, telling the truth here can get you in a lot of trouble. But I feel that's my obligation to you. If you're going to spend the time to watch my videos, then I owe it to you to be honest to you about everything that happens here and what I've experienced, and I'm going to share that with you. Okay, so let's uh, go over question number one. Why the Philippines? Uh, well, actually, to be honest with you, the Philippines was not my first choice. Uh, I researched Thailand for many years. Uh, I, I did a, a backpacking trip back in 2008. I spent 30 days backpacking through Thailand and Vietnam, and uh, it changed my life. Uh, it was just after a divorce that I had. I spent 20 years uh, with, an, with an American girl, uh, uh, 20 very good years, might I add. Um, uh, 15 of those years we were married. Uh, we lived together for five years before we got married. And uh, it was a great relationship. Uh, we just kind of uh, drifted apart. So it um, didn't work out for me. And after that uh, marriage broke up, I decided to start traveling. And one of the first trips I took was a trip to uh, Bangkok and Vietnam. I spent 30 days. And uh, I was just uh, head over heels about both countries, really. Um, and uh, I started doing research. I joined an expat forum, a Thailand expat forum. And uh, I was, uh, my goal was to move to either Chan Buri or Hua Hin in Thailand. That's where I was headed. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, a couple of years into that research, I uh, started dating a Vietnamese girl. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm from Southern California. There's a giant, giant Vietnamese population in Southern California. Um, so I started dating, uh, dating her and became a, a part of this giant Vietnamese family. Uh, my God, they're amazing. They all migrated here to the U.S. right at the end of the Vietnam War uh, when shit really hit the fan there and uh, the communists took over Saigon. And uh, they, they all did great. They, they, the Vietnamese worked very, very hard. Um, and they see the uh, United States as an opportunity. And uh, it's, it's a little bit different than the Filipino culture 
the Vietnamese culture, everybody works and they all put their money together. Uh, four families might live in one house, but everybody works. They all pull their money together. They build the house up. They send all the kids to college. Uh, completely different culture. Um, they are very, very uh, work oriented, the Vietnamese. So uh, for a while there, I thought maybe that's the route that I was going to go is to retire in Vietnam. And then, uh, you know, one day I was going through my Thailand forum and somebody posted something about the Philippines. And uh, I followed the link and it took me over to a Filipino, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, a Philippines expat forum. So I created my profile there and I logged in and I started reading about the Philippines. And then I, uh, I have a military history uh, with the Philippines. I was stationed in Subic Bay for 90 days. And... Uh, this was back in 1985. I spent from 82 to 87 in the U.S. Marine Corps, okay, uh, stationed at Camp Pendleton. So uh, I was on Westpac float on the USS Okinawa, uh, went into Alangapo City, uh, Subic Bay, and we spent two different trips, 45 days each trip, and uh, I fell in love with the Philippines. Um, so anyway, uh, I digress. To go back now, somebody had posted something on my Thailand uh, expat form, and I followed the link and went over to uh, Philippines, uh, what was it? Uh, Philippine Addicts is the name of the website, the forum. <coughs> I started thinking about my Subic Bay days, and uh, before you know it, I was planning a trip to go back to see Subic Bay, and I did. That was in uh, 2014. And uh, on that trip, I became friends. Uh, so, uh, how, why, why Philippines? Um, let me get there. Why Philippines? I guess I have to go into the second question now. I've got to start telling you. Uh, the second question, or the third question was, uh, how did I meet Melanie? And then we'll do the retirement thing uh, a little bit later, why I'm retired early. So, what happened was, uh, on that first trip, I, I became, I befriended several people, several Filipinos, and of course, uh, Filipinos love Facebook, and they add you on Facebook right away, and uh, it turns out that Melanie's, this was Melanie's cousin that I had friended. He was a, a bartender in one of the restaurants there, actually at the Lewis Grand Hotel, where I was staying, in Angeles. So... Uh, once I became friends with him, you know, I started trolling his friends and I found Melanie. And wow, well, I was just enthralled. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, looking at pictures of Melanie at, at family functions and things of that nature. So I, I sent, uh, you know, Melanie a message and we started chatting. And that began an internet uh, a love affair, really, for two years before we met. Uh, so Melanie and I didn't meet until, uh, what was it, June of 2015 was the first time that her and I met in person. And we had chatted for, actually it was almost three years. We had chatted off and on. Uh, with six months of that being very serious to the point where we knew that we wanted to enter into a relationship. Uh, there was a, a couple of years there of just kind of flirting back and forth. And uh, that's how I met Melanie. And... Uh, all the videos are on the channel, guys. If you go back, you'll see. You can see the very first video that we did together uh, at the Lewis Grand Hotel. It was in 2015 of June. And uh, why am I, uh, how did I end up in the Philippines at such a young age? Um, God, I hope I'm not rambling. I hope this is okay. <clears throat> I guess I'll have to uh, view the video to see. <clears throat> okay, I was a... I was in the Marine Corps from 80, 1982 to 87, okay? I'm originally from Speedway, Indiana. That's where I was born and raised and grew up as a kid. Uh, I was a rotten student. Uh, you know, I was just a terrible student. All I cared about was smoking pot and dating girls and, you know, it was the early 80s. That's what you did then. And uh, so, I, obviously, I went into the military. I joined the Marine Corps. Uh, I was 17 when I joined in 1982. They had something called a delayed entry program where you could join the Marine Corps ahead, a year ahead of going in. And what you did is you, did, you were like a reservist. Every month uh, for one weekend, you went to a reserve center and you learned uh, how, how to be a Marine. So that's what I did. 
And uh, what happened to me is after I got out of the Marine Corps, I, I got a great job with the third largest cable company in the United States, okay? I started as an installer, installing cable in people's homes, worked my way into construction, and was building uh, actual uh, coaxial and optical networks for the company. And then I, from there, I went into becoming a line technician. I, did, I was a line tech for 20 years. Um, climbed telephone poles. I worked on the main line trunk, distribution, and the fiber optic network. So my department worked on problems that affected anywhere from several hundred to several thousand customers, okay? Uh, I was very good at what I did. Uh, made a, a lot of money, too. Uh, I was living in Southern California, making six figures. Uh, living a very, very comfortable life. And uh, what happened was, what happened to me was, on the 25th of June, 2016, I was involved in a motorcycle accident. Um, what happened was, uh, I was on Harbor Boulevard in Costa Mesa, uh, heading north, back towards the canyon. I was going to ride the canyon back home, um, and somebody. I, I was on a. It was. I was on a road that's three lanes each way. Okay, uh, and, I, and I was in a, a commercial area where there was like a Target and TJ Maxx and uh, things of that nature uh, all the way to the right of me. Somebody cut it. Cut us off. Cut it. Made a left hand turn right in front of us uh, when he shouldn't have. And uh, a bunch of the cars almost hit him. I almost hit him. I had to lock the motorcycle up. I was a little bit too heavy on that front brake. What happened was that front end of that motorcycle, I was, on an, I was only on an 800cc uh, cruiser at that time. I had a small cruiser. Uh, Melanie and I ended up buying a 1500cc cruiser, uh, which was ours. It was a Suzuki C90 Boss. Um, wow, beautiful bike. Uh, but anyway, the front end of that motorcycle washed out. And I'm an old dirt bike rider, so instinctively I put my left leg out to keep from to keep from going down with the bike, and it just wrecked my knee. Um, I mean, I thought at the time that that accident happened, I thought I had broken my leg. Um, you know, I was able to put my leg back up, get the bike down in the first gear, pull over to the curb, get <coughs> get off the bike, and sit there for a few minutes. But what happened was. Uh, to, to shorten this a little bit because I'm at 12 minutes now, almost 13. Uh, I tore the ACL and MCL in my left knee and uh, was out on disability from work because in my job, uh, we spent all eight hours of our day down on our knees, breaking down a circuit, rebuilding a, a part of the circuit, or we would be uh, up in the air climbing telephone poles. Okay, 20% uh, 20, 20 of our, of our uh, network was in the air. And the 80% was underground. So it's a very, very hard job. Uh, almost everybody that I've worked with over the years, I spent 31 years with this company, but almost everybody that I worked with over the years had knee surgery uh, because the job uh, of being a line tech is so, so hard on your knees. So what happened with me is I, had to, I ended up having two surgeries and I was out of work for 14 months on disability. Okay, so while I was out of work, after giving 31 years of my life to this company, they eliminated my job. They eliminated my position. And uh, um, so there was, after that happened, there was other work in my, in my field. And what I did, I could have joined another cable company uh, that was just uh, half an hour north of where I lived. But the problem is it was a $15 to $20 an hour pay cut. Uh, you know, I was making about $45 an hour. Uh, again, I'd been with this company for 31 years, so I was making $45 an hour. Uh, that's, that's why they got rid of me. Uh, I was making too much money. Uh, I also had eight weeks of paid vacation, you know. So you can't go from making that kind of money, you can't take a $15 an hour pay cut to the point where you're, you know, not able to pay your bills. Uh, so what happened was, uh, when that happened, uh, uh, by the way, I left out the point that I brought Melanie to the U.S. Melanie was in the U.S. when this happened. I had brought Melanie to the U.S. on a K-1 visa that I processed myself, okay? So we are uh, very capable in the K-1 process. If you're going through that, send us a question, or send us, uh, if you have a question about it, we process the whole thing ourselves. Melanie was in the U.S., working at Walmart as a cashier, and uh, uh, there was nothing that we could do. I sent Melanie back here to the Philippines, and I told her, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to survive. We can't bring the kids here. 
and live in Southern California on 15 to 20 dollars less an hour than what I was making okay that's corporate America okay if you are in a corporate job in America and you've got tenure you've just got a big target on your back okay be careful be careful of what you do uh, I had I never ever would have guessed that my company was going to turn their back on me the way they did um, it's sad but it's just the way things work in America you know and it's probably like that too also in Australia or Europe I'm sure it's not just America that's uh, shitting on their employees, you know, their long-term employees especially. Um, but that's how we ended up here. Uh, we sold everything, uh, sold our house. Uh, we made a nice tidy profit on the house. That's what we're living on now here. And I've got a pension from my company that will start uh, when I turn 55, which is uh, about 17 months from now. I turn 55, I will draw a monthly pension um, for the time that I served there with that company. And uh, that's, that's, uh, that's my story, guys. Uh, if I left anything out, uh, it's too late for me to go back now. I know I kind of did things out of order, uh, but I, I didn't script any of this. I like to vlog just right off the cuff. I don't want to have a, uh, you know, a plan or a detailed list of, of, of stuff. I, I don't really uh, operate that way. I like to just vlog right off the cuff. So uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, please go to the Facebook page or leave it in the comments. Uh, I try to reply to every single comment that's left, okay? Uh, I, I'm going to do that for as long as I possibly can, I promise. <laughs> Thanks so much for supporting our channel. That is my story about how I came to the Philippines, how I met Melanie, and why I'm here today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it didn't bore you. Uh, oh, I hate talking head videos, but there was the, this was the only way I could do it. Thanks again for supporting our channel. We really appreciate the support that you guys give us. We love, love, love our subscribers. You guys are great. And tomorrow's the live chat. I'm looking forward to that. It's been two weeks since we did a live chat. So that's going to be fun. And uh, we're also going to, to announce the winner of our Name That Food Challenge on the uh, Pinoy Cooking with Melanie channel. So thanks again for your support. We really appreciate it. Give us a like, share, subscribe. And uh, thanks again for being a part of our channel. We really appreciate it. Bye now.